Hello everybody. So on the on the Facebook um, Brain Directors group, I found a, a, a great question about how can you develop on your site in a production ready state without the public actually seeing the changes on the site or the ones that you're working on. Okay. There's a couple of things that you need to be able to handle here before um, doing something like that. And you got obviously you got to be very careful so the public doesn't see the changes or the changes don't break something on the site. So there's several techniques that I'm going to teach you. They're, they're not all the techniques that you can do, but I'm going to teach you at least the, um, the simplest ones that you can do on on the site. Okay. Or at least more or less the simplest ones. So here's my testing site. Okay. Where I do all the videos and all that. And let's say that I want to change this this area for something else, okay? Um, but I want to test that before the public actually sees it. So a quick idea, it's a, a simple, and that's why I'm saying only the simple ones because they're more complex ones, but they offer better flexibility, flexibility and security for you. But I'm just gonna be talking about the simple ones that you, you yourself, you the owner can actually do or what people call a junior developer can can actually do without affecting your production ready site so you click on the magnifying glass here and remember that to be able to see the admin sidebar you click on visit website up here you, once you do that you go to your home page you should be able to see something like this okay so we want to change this area so that it will show the development that we're doing without the public able to see it. So one idea is let's customize this widget. Okay, let's go back here to the to the front with other widgets. Here's that widget. And let's do something. Let's say, and let me just double check which posts, which features actually have. Okay, we got the events, but they're all expire. What about web articles? Okay, we can we can use this one. Um, let's say that you want to change this whole thing, but only on the staging or development mode side. So we can do something like this. Here you put if, let me show you, put dollar underscore, and we say def development, for example, or, or let's just say staging, okay, staging mode. If staging mode is um, one, let's put it like that one. Actually, if staging mode is not one, then you show this whole thing, this whole thing here, the default that people are supposed to see. If not, if not else, okay, we show something else. This could be a custom widget that you have, anything else. And, and this trick can actually, okay, reason, I think it's blog articles, if I'm not mistaken. We save that, refresh cache. We go to the front, I'm just gonna put it as a default there. And we're, we're seeing the same thing. We're seeing that this is working properly and there's nothing weird there. Okay, let's enable the staging mode. So let's go to staging equals one. Voila, the thing changed. So now you can work on this area, this container is called, without the public actually seeing the the, you know, the final version. Now, what happens if you make a mistake? Okay, you make a mistake and you put in, in this, you, you do something like this. Some, somebody codes something wrong and they, and they do this, something like that, whoops. If you do something like that, and even if you're not in the staging mode, let's just remove this here. This happens. You broke the site. You're like, okay, I don't know what. For those particular cases, then my recommendation is instead of working on the actual front page that people are going to be seeing, I would recommend working on a special page that you have somewhere else, like hidden away. And you can call it whatever you want. Uh, let's just create one here. 
And we're going to grab this widget. Okay. And let's just create a new page. It's called uh, Working Something. Okay. And then we put a widget there because that's the widget or the container that you're going to be working with. We save that. And this could be whatever. This could be whatever. It could be a custom widget or something. We go to that page and you can start working on this page. If you make a mistake, it only it's contained within this page, the working something page. So it doesn't affect the other ones, the, the real life pages. That's another technique. And that's to handle errors. Okay, uh, in case, and this is again, this is for cases where you don't want to buy two licenses for BD, three, four, ten, or something. My recommendation is you always have backup, but um, it's up to each and every one. Um, and for these cases, for these particular cases, you are, right now we're limiting the whole thing by a variable that you put in the URL. But you can actually, if you analyze this, you take your time and analyze this, you can actually change content on the page if you're a particular member. So let's say that um, if I'm in the membership plan one, then it will show whatever is showing there. Let's go to the, the back end, okay? So it's, okay, it's the ID one. Let me just print out here. Um, so let me see if I can do it like this. Give me one second. I'm looking for the variables that I can use there. Typically it's users data or users or something like that, but let me just users or user subscription ID. So I go that one. Go to the front state, yeah. Okay, I don't see a number here or something. I can also do a cookie actually. Okay, I forgot we gotta remove this here. Okay, test. Okay, we got the one there. That's what I wanted to, to get. Uh, so we could say, for example, if if I'm um, if I'm a member in the membership level one, okay, so we say cookie equals one, then it shows this content. Okay, but if I'm not, and let's copy this incognito. It shows a different content. See, so the public would see this, and the members would see this. So now you're ending up customizing this site based on the behavior, profession, subcategories, membership levels, where they actually came from. You can put locations there too, if you wanted to. Uh, if they have two or more posts, it's whatever rules you want to do in regards to. The, the, con the, the dynamic way of the content and how it's going to behave depending on the member that's going to be coming here. The same concept also affects design changes. So for example, let's come here, let's refresh here, and we have these blue buttons, okay? And maybe you want to change, um, you, you want to start doing uh, CSS changes, design changes. And you want to ch change the, the, the button primary colors for some reason. Let's go to here, design settings. You want to start to change those to something else. Okay, let me, let me just copy this because I don't want to type all this in again. That's a class. I do something like this. Okay, actually, let me just change it here to speed up the process. We're going to do green. Uh, something like a like a like a green like that and the borders be lighter there and just let, let's leave it like that for now and you want to do that if they have the staging enable okay 
um, we want to override the one that BD is using by default. That's why we're using this. Okay, we don't recommend, but it's just to be more practical. And then we'll say the same thing here on PHP. If you got um, you know, staging, and that staging equals one, this here, then if boom, 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 yep, then it will actually render that uh, CSS code. So let's save that there. And we're gonna come here and we're gonna refresh and you see this like that. But if we put again staging, you see the green buttons now. And it could be green buttons, you can make those buttons. Um, let's do it here so you can actually see the difference. Adding maybe 20. It's a lot for that, but with the staging, then you start modifying elements. You start moving them around. You start whatever for you, not the public. See? So now you have a couple ideas. Uh, these are simple ideas that I s sometimes use, but there's much better ones, more complex ones that you, are you can actually also do here on Bridge Directories to customize your site without the public ever being able to see them, okay? So I hope this open up your mind about things that you can do with this. And not only that, but how you can actually create your own different themes for the different members that can be on your site or even change functionality designs, access to a certain areas or content, depending on the membership levels uh, and with simple validations like this. Hope the video helped. Big hugs to everybody and think positive as always.